chapter 7, verse 13. We're going to look at verses 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. The title of the message is Be Opposite to This World. Be Opposite to This World. Be Opposite to This World. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Amen. Be opposite to this world. You know, when we look at our text verses, you know, Matthew 17, uh, 7, 13, and 14, practically, you know, Lord Jesus Christ is teaching that the majority is wrong. Right off the bat, majority is wrong. And in order to be opposite to this world, you have to go against majority. And if you want to be with the majority, many times you have to know that you're on the wrong side as a Christian. Yes. And especially when it comes to the matters of spiritual things, including salvation, majority is wrong. Yeah. Many will say, I mean, billions of you know, religions, people out there says, love, 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 love. You know, show love, you know, and you go to heaven. Do your best, you go to heaven. Give money, you go to heaven. See Jesus Christ in your dreams. See God in your dreams, you go to heaven. Speak in tongues, you go to heaven. Be filled with devil spirit, a.k.a., you know, to them is Holy Spirit. Right. And you go to heaven. But it's all wrong. It's all majority. And that's why many will think that they're going to heaven but end up in hell. Right. Yes. That's why not only applying to your spiritual matters, but in your everyday life, you can't go with the majority. Simple as that. You know, majority says humanism is the way to go. Yep. Majority says you know, everyone's rights, right? Majority says you know, it's time to give, you know, homosexuals all the rights as well. They're same. Majority says transgenders, same, okay. What happened in Tennessee, you know, last week, on Monday? You know, transgender person went and killed three people, three adults and three children at a private Christian school. And transgender movement is afraid that they're going to use that against, you know, their movement. I mean, you don't need that to prove that it's not the right way in the first place. The majority says, you know, alcoholism is just a part of a disability. It's not. Alcoholism will ruin people's lives, and it's a sin. Yes. People say, you know, you could have more than one wife and more than one husband. Majority says, you know, just having a relationship before marriage is fine. It's wrong. Amen. You know, it's against the word of God. Yes. Whenever you go with the majority, you're going to end up at the wrong end of the stick, so to speak. Right. When you go with the majority, you're like a tree. Whenever wind, strong winds come your way, you always fall. Yes. You have to be that tree firmly rooted in the ground. And whatever wind comes, even tornado comes, 
Even hurricane comes. You know, we see that a lot nowadays. Yes. Especially the Midwest, you know. It's unfortunate. People are losing their lives and their properties and everything because of tornadoes. However, you should be that tree. Whatever the world throws at you, you stand firm in your faith, no matter what. Because there are trees out there. Even through the tornadoes, hurricanes, you know, hailstorms, I mean, a typhoon, they're still firmly standing. You have to be that tree. Because wide road may seem easier at first. It always seems easier. Yes, it does. Uh, but however, ultimately, it will lead to danger and dead ends. Amen. It's, a, it's like a climber. Climber, if they know that if wide way is easier at first, but at the end, it will cause you to not reach the summit, they shouldn't go that way in the first place. They should choose that at first narrow and difficult road, but at the end, it gets easier and re you reach the summit and you see the whole world. You know, that's what they want to do. Many times as a Christian, you only look at what's right in front of you and that you want to be in that majority and wide road. Because, you know, if someone were to say, are you for the straight marriage or are you for all the marriage, right? It's not just about, you know, homosexual, same-sex marriage anymore. Because you have so many other pluses that's come in, you know, it has to be everything else. Right. I mean, animals included now. Right. So what are you going to do in a classroom? What are you going to do, you know, at work? What are you going to do? Are you going to stand with the majority or are you going to stand for the word of God? Word of God. It's up to you. You know, I can't force you. Your mommy and daddy can't force you, especially you're an adult. You have to make that choice. You have to be opposite to this world. Whether you like it or not, that's how Lord Jesus Christ views this. That's how God views this world. If you were to be with majority, many of you, including me, probably are not even saved. Right. If you're always with the majority, you're going to have wrong doctrine. Amen. How many people do you think in this world stands up for King James Bible nowadays? I mean, if it weren't for Dr. Ruckman, God using him to stand up for King James Bible, I mean, we'll be using NASB, ESV, you know, NIV, right. and a new idiot's version yeah. to us, right? Yes. You know, many times, <laughs> I mean, I was, I was joking with my wife, you know, no one really calls me idiot, right? Except your wife, right? <laughs> and for you guys too, right? Yes. <laughs> but because you are being idiotic, so you deserve to be called. Amen. But if you're using NIV, I'm sorry. You're using the idiot's version. Yes. Because it's not the word of God. And especially the evidence is all there. Amen. Before, before really I found the truth, I mean, I used NIV. But the funny thing is I never really opened the Bible. <laughs> I just carried it. And it was all Christian contemporary music. You had a projector. And all you did was, you know, wave your hand, you know, sing up and down, call it a praise and worship. And then suddenly someone goes, hey, look at Acts chapter 8, verse 37. I'm like, oh, where's Acts? Like, I mean, you don't, use the, you don't open the Bible. Which are the people cannot recite the New Testament, let alone the whole Bible, right? right. 66 books. Right. And I was one of them. Yeah. And I was probably the person who says, turn to Hezekiah. I would try to look for Hezekiah all day. <laughs> and, I mean, first time, I was shocked. Yes. I couldn't find Acts 837. What's wrong with this Bible? You know. And, of course, you study more. That's why if you are listening to this message, you have to do your due diligence. Don't just take it just from my words only. You have to do your study. Yes. You know, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, 2 Timothy 2.15. So you have to study the word of God. And as you study the word of God, as I study the word of God, and King James Bible and other versions, I realized, man, I was an idiot. Yes. 
using idiot's version, new international version. And once I realized that, man, you know, I've been a fool. What was yesterday in America? April Fool's Day, right? Well, atheists always complain. We need a national holiday. Christians have Easter, Christians have, you know, Christmas, right? You know, Muslims have, what, Ramadan? You know, Jewish people have, like, Hanukkah, you know? They go, we need it. <laughs> Judge goes, yeah, you already have it. Psalm says in chapter 14, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Amen. So April 1st is your holiday. April Fool's Day. So yes. you can't complain. Amen. Because according to the word of God, I mean, that judge had a sense. You know, that judge, you know, must have believed the word of God. Right. Said, you know, you're a fool. So there's the national holiday for you. <laughs> April Fool's Day. As you can see, when you go with the majority, you're going to go against the Bible. Simple as that. That's why TVs are so dangerous. Yes. Now, you know, a lot of people don't watch TV anymore. They just watch things through their phone, cell phone, right? That's why there's like a lot of turtlenecks everywhere. Yes. Because people are walking and just, you know, sitting down doing this, you know, all the time on the bed doing that, right? And as you conform to all of these worldly things, then you become very polluted. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Now we're familiar verses. Romans chapter 12. Let's look at verses 1 and 2. So if you ever had any inclination, agreement, harmony with the world, this is a time for you to break that bond that you have with the world, whatever it may be. The, all the wrong ideology and, you know, things that you learn from the school, you have to get rid of it. Yes. Because what is the essential duty of education nowadays? To brainwash you, Amen. just like communism. Yes. They want you to, I mean, elementary kids, again, I've said it many times, they're learning things that I didn't even know until I was in high school. And he's talking about all these lustful sins. Yeah. Seven-year-olds shouldn't know about certain things for a reason. Yes. That's why their parents don't talk to them about any of those wicked things until they're of the age. Right. And of the age, to me, it's not seven or six, eight, nine. No. They should at least have two digits minimum. Yes. Right? But nowadays, you know, if you're nine years old, you should know everything about the world. And that's why they ask really wicked questions, you know. And why can't I date the person? You're seven. You know, why can't I marry that person? You're eight. You know, why can't I change my, you know, gender? What? You know, and then stupid parents will go, oh, yeah, you know, I got to respect your opinion. No, oh, yeah, yeah, hey, let's go see a doctor. Let's go see a shrink. No. Majority said it's okay. I mean, even government, medical, you know, I don't even know if they provide you know, insurance for those you know, sex change you know, surgeries. Maybe they do. Coming Who knows? You know? And you know, it's going to become more rampant then. Yes. And you know, as a Christian, you have to be firmly standing on your ground, Amen. no matter what. Yeah, I mean, I don't care if you put a gun to my head. You know, I'm not going to be moved. I'll, I'll be that tree. When the hurricane comes, when the tornado comes, I'm just going to be grounded in my faith. Because I know you can't hurt me unless you get permission from your father, which is the devil. I mean, your father has to get permission from my father. You know, Amen. try to, so your father is the devil. And then my dad is greater than your father, yeah. you know. Then, you know, your dad has to get permission from my dad. If my dad said it's okay, then it's okay, you know, because I have 100% faith in my dad, you know, yes. my father in heaven. Amen. Then, you know, whatever men may do unto you, there's nothing that you should worry about, right? Whether it's anywhere, whether it's at school, you know, whether it's at work, 
you know, whether it's at a public place, well, you do have to be wise about it, right? You shouldn't be out there picking fights. You know, some Bible believers love to do that. You know, I mean, when I was younger, you know, I was like one of that, you know, foolish ones, because I knew the truth, and I can't stand people who's against the truth. So you, you know, you pick a fight. Hey, you know, this is the truth from the Word of God. And they're like nominal Christians. They're worldly Christians. They don't know anything. And then and they're brainwashed with a bunch of other stuff. And you go to them, and they don't know anything. So what's, what's, what's the natural reaction of human being when they don't know anything and they get offended, right? You know, they get loud. And they get angry. A lot of times, then you start fighting. And that's not a wise thing to do. And as a Bible-believing Christian, especially young people <clears throat> and newer Christians, you have to understand that. You've know, you got to give people space to grow. You've got to understand where they're coming from. Not everybody will have the same mindset like you, especially if they're the majority. Obviously, they don't know about the King James. They don't know about the right doctrine. So they're going to be against you in the first place. So you have to be wise about how you talk to people out there when it comes to the truth. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Then, in order to be opposite to this world, first thing you have to do is what? Offer your body a living sacrifice. That's it. You have to offer your body as a living sacrifice to God. You know, you can't always just talk. Everybody loves to talk. You and I can do it. You know, we could talk, you know, each other's ears off, right? And some of you love to talk. You know, you could just talk about anything. You could talk about just this light. Right. And you could talk about it for hours and hours, you know. Yes. How this light makes my skin, her skin, his skin, you know, how it blinds my eyes sometimes, you know, or <laughs> anything. Everybody could talk. But Bible says it's a command. It's not an option for you and I to give our bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. It's a command. You have to do it. And Apostle Paul's beseeching you. Beseeching is like begging you because he knows how important it is. As Christians, you have to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And it doesn't say it's an impossible service, does it? It's a reasonable service, something that you have to do it. If you don't do it, then you're what? You're disobeying the word of God. And God will never make you do things that's unreasonable to you. If you think that, oh, man, God always puts, puts me in a situation of impossibility. No, he doesn't. He knows you. Better than anybody else. Yes. He knows better than you. Yes. He knows me better than me. So he knows that if any temptation or world thing, worldly things come my way, he gives me grace and mercy and strength to defeat it. That's why you can be opposite to this world. And if you do not have that mindset already, if you have not dedicated your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord, then you have to do it. And you have to remember this. You know, we always have that dedication, right? Commitment. You like commit to the Lord. I am committed to you, Lord. I'm going to give myself up as a living sacrifice. And then inevitably, you and I fall. Yes. Because we're sinners. We're weak. Right. And then you go, Lord, I re dedicate myself to you. I dedicate myself to you again. That's false. You only dedicate yourself once to the Lord. 
when you got to save, when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, according to Romans 12, 1, you're already supposed to present your body as a living sacrifice. Now, you're going to fall. Next step is that you just have to repent and get right with the Lord and continue and continue. It's not your option to, like, I'm going to rededicate, rededicate. I'm going to dedicate over and over and over. No. You got to just do it. Get right with the Lord and continue. And that's the message that's lost in many of Christians yes. nowadays. You think that you have the option. You know, what's the funny thing about children? And, you know, we all act like children. We think we have options, you know, when it comes to obeying our parents, right? Ah, certain things, you know, chores, you know, taking out the trash. I have an option. You know, my parents said take it out by Wednesday. You know what? Wednesday seems like a tough day for me. I'll do it on Friday. You know, oh, I missed this. So I'll do it next week. And then, you know, you have flies everywhere. You have raccoons and all these animals coming, right? You know, you think you have options. You don't. You know, it's imperative. So when it comes to the Lord's command, you and I don't really have options. We just have to obey. And let's look at verse 2. So first thing, if you, don't, if you want to be opposite to this world, you have to offer your body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Second thing, verse 2, and be not conformed to this world. You cannot be conformed to this world. You cannot be like this world. You cannot harmonize with this world. You can't be in unity with this world. You can't be in a agreement with this world. You cannot act in accordance with this world. Why? Because that's what devil wants from you. Amen. Devil doesn't care anymore. Right. You're saved. You're not his child anymore. Like, man, I hate you, man. I hate you. Yes. I hate every one of you who accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. But you know what? If you're not different from this world, you're okay. If you're the same as any other worldly Joes and Janes out there, I'll be okay, right? Because average Christian doesn't mind doing, for, doing something for Jesus Christ as long as that person doesn't have to be different from the world. I mean, a lot of times, you don't mind doing things when you're not different from the world. If world is singing... You don't mind singing. If world is going that way, you don't mind going that way, right? The thing is, when you have that kind of mindset, you got to understand, the devil feels the same way. Man, I want you to keep on thinking like that, right? Just go with the world. He never minds. As long as you worship Jesus Christ in his own terms. That's why so many Christians fall into backslidden state. They compromise music, right? Right. Like contemporary Christian music. Like using all these worldly beats. You know, the funny thing is, even secular programs out there, you know, has a show about those things. Play this contemporary Christian music without the lyric. Let's see how your body reacts. Your body moves. Your body dances to the beat. And then you start getting this lustful urges, right? Then how different is it going to be if you just put some words in there? It's the same. But do you ever see that happening with singing, you know, our traditional hymns, no. right? Like when we all get to heaven, you know, we're singing here, you know, do you, or do you see your body's urge to be lustful? I don't think so, right? I don't know. Singing the right amazing grace, right? Yes. He's coming again. Yes. Man, I, I will shout and holler and maybe run the bases. Yeah. But we don't have like this lustful desires no. that suddenly appear. <laughs> so you have to understand. When he says, when the Bible says, be not conformed to this world is everything about this world. 
if Satan can just get you to conform to this world, then nobody will be able to tell the difference between you and the world. Right. And that's the saddest thing. Yes. If we were to just see you at face value and bring another worldly person as an example, yes. their life and your life, if there's no difference, then you have conformed to this world. You're part of devil's agenda. Yes. And you are agreeing with devil's agenda. Think about it. Early Christians, we're talking about early Christians. They were persecuted, tortured, they're mutilated, and murdered. Why? Why? Because they wouldn't conform. Simple as that. I mean, if you don't conform, does that happen to you? Literally, you get mutilated, you get tortured and murdered right now? No. Thank God that we live in a free country where that doesn't happen. Amen. Even with that kind of blessing that you and I have, you still conform to this world. I mean, if those martyrs look at you and me, man, they'll be shaking their head. Yes. And they deservedly so. Hey, you and I should be ashamed. Amen. I mean, they, when their fingernails were, you know, plucked out, their joints were broken, right? Their limbs were torn apart. Their eyes were being plucked out. The ears are being cut off, right? Their tongues are being cut off. I mean, they're burned at the stake from toe to head. They did not conform Amen. to this world. They actually praise the Lord for it. But you and I, you know, when we are put in a spot, because you have to remember, Lord will always test you and me. Yes. Right. He has to. He has to keep you in check. It's like little children. I mean, I'm comparing myself to little children. Why? Because we always act like little children. Yes. To tell them, okay, wash your hand when you get home. Because you have a lot of germs, right? right. And then, you know, you wash your hand like first couple of days. And then you come home, you get a little tired. Ah, I'm not going to wash my hand. And then that becomes a repeated behavior. So you stop washing your hand, and you catch cold, you catch virus, you spread it to everybody in the family, and then root cause is that you stop washing your hand because you weren't told to. But if your parents every day, they, hey, did you wash your hand? You might not like to hear it, but when you do it, it's good for your own good. Yes. And you wash your hand, you stay clean, you're not sick anymore, and your parents, your family, everybody, your sibling, they're healthy because you're obeying. That's a test that you and I need to get. Unfortunately, we have a thing called old nature, flesh, which love to do everything against the word of God, which love to disobey things of God, which love to just backslide, you know, love to see you suffer as a Christian. Then you have to understand, you know, I'm going to be tested on a daily basis when it comes to confirming, conforming to this world. Am I going to be opposite to this world, right? You have, to, you have to know. Because if you don't make that dedication and commitment, it's very easy. If your mind is not even ready, then when something hits you, usually you're going to be flustered, you're going to stutter, and you're going to fall. For example, I'm standing right here, and I didn't, I mean, like a thousand pound ball's going to roll, right? And it comes at me like 200 miles per hour. But the, there's a catch. I could see it coming if I know it's coming, and I'm ready for it. So if I see it coming, I'm just going to move out of the way. But if I'm not ready for it, what happens? Even though it's coming, I don't even realize it. So before I realize that it's uh, something that's going to harm me, I look up and he runs me over. And you're over. You can't go back in time. Right. Many times after you conform to this world, you can't go back. Right. That's the hardest part. And once you conform to this world, what's the result of it? 
you're going to continue until you finish conforming this, to this world. That's the hardest part. Once you start sinning, you can't stop until you go through this whole life cycle. That's the scariest part about sin. Once you let yourself conform to this world, you are going to conform completely. And once you do that, how many of you guys like having scars on your face? People like to show scar. Hey, I have scar here. You know, it's my battle wounds and stuff, right? But when it comes to your face, people don't want scars. Almost everybody, right? You know, like you have a scar like right here at the forehead, you know, or even across your nose, you know. Like, no, 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 I don't want that. I don't mind having it on my arms and elbows, you know. It looks cool, but once you conform to this world, then you're going to have permanent scars. And you can't hide it, right? You could put all the makeups in the world, but something about this spiritual scars, you know, you're going to carry it. Yes. And it's going to remind you. And devil's going to point at it, and devil's going to press it. Hey, remember? You know, you had a good time. Think about that. Do it again. And that's why people do it over and over again. Isn't it, isn't it kind of sad that you and I always tend to do the same things over and over, even though we know it's bad? Because we are that weak. Unless you admit to the Lord, and unless you go to the Lord for help, and this is about sincerity. You have to do it from the bottom of your heart. Because many of you guys, it's just a game to you, right? You're just here, you're just listening, blah, blah, blah. This guy's talking about something I heard a million times before. Yeah, you could play the game with the Lord. I mean, it doesn't bother me, right? Because it's you and the Lord. Yes. Because some people are serious about getting right with the Lord. That's why you're listening. That's why it's pricking your heart. And if it is happening, and if you are really concerned about spiritual matters, then stop participating in amusements of this world. Amen. You gotta stop. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's like a what? There's karaoke bars out there, right? Some of you guys love to sing. Like, ah, Lord, I'm gonna go sing some hymns for you at the karaoke bar, right? <laughs> Just think about the, think about the place, yeah. right? I mean, what good comes of it? You know what, Lord? No, I'm going to preach, and I love preaching. So I'm just going to go into a bar and preach. Not the smartest thing to do. Everybody's taking picture. You're coming out of the bar. How are they going to know that you're preaching to anybody? They'll just assume that, hey, you had a good time drinking at a bar. Yes. So when it comes to amusements of this world, just think twice. Think about it. Is it really glorifying God? Am I conforming to this world? Right? That's why as a Christian, you have to really be careful. There's a fine line, right? You could always enjoy the nature and things God has given you to enjoy. But once you cross that line and you start mixing the world with it, then it becomes sinful. It becomes worldly. Because what is the main attraction that devil wants to present to you to make you fall? Half and half. Just like a red poison, you know, 99% is good. That 1% is the poison. Devil will always do that to you. He knows you're kind of like a borderline Christian when it comes to giving your you know, bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. So you're like, okay. Sundays, go to church. You know? But right after church, you know what you got to do. 
you got some parties to go to, right? You got to go drink some, you know, beer afterwards. And church, you know, that BBCI is pretty long services, right? Okay, so you're tired. So go home, you know, take out a cold one, you know, start drinking, right? You know, oh yeah, remember? You have that girl or boy you have to meet, you know, hey. They, they never want to come to the church because it's too holy for them, right? So hey, let's just, just meet him after the church. You know, it's fine, you know. You done your part, right? The person went to some other secular church, right? So it's okay. That's what devil wants from you. You just want to be different from the world as long as it doesn't make you uncomfortable. As Christian, you have to be uncomfortable. Yes. As Christian, you have to learn to be uncomfortable. Yes. As Christian, you have to stand up as an uncomfortable person in this world. Yes. I mean, this is not your home. Amen. I mean, if you think that this is your permanent home, then you have a wrong mentality. Right. I mean, our affection should be in heaven. Amen. Our mansions in heaven. Right. It's just a temporary dwelling. Yes. Right? If you strive to have a million-dollar mansion in your life here, then that's a wrong, wrong goal to have. And the Bible says if you want to be rich quick, a lot of times you're going to compromise, right? right? You're going to compromise the spiritual ways. Then you're going to conform to this world. That's why you have to always think, think, man, am I part of a modern Christian movement or am I still traditional Bible-believing those martyrs, you know, who stand up for faith and truth, no matter what the devil throws at me. Jesus Christ is really, really misused, at least this time of the year. Yes. You know, world is preparing for Easter and everything. And then they try to bring in every worldly things, right? right? Mm -hmm. You know, rabbits, eggs, bunch of worldly songs, music, plays. Lord doesn't want that. I mean, we just read it in the book of Matthew. He doesn't want broad this majority way. No. Lord said in a very, very narrow way. Then you have to look at yourself. Do you get, do you get amused? Do you enjoy looking for that egg somewhere? You know, right? Participating in all these, you know, worldly things. You have to think. And the parents, you have to be very careful. Yes. Because just because, you know, everybody else is doing it, every other Christian is doing it, it's okay for you to do it. No. I mean, who's your standard? Is that the Bible? I mean, is that the, I mean, is that the world? Because someone were asking, let's continue, you know, Romans chapter 12. Let's look at verse 2. So, you know, if you want to be opposite to this world, first one, you know, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Second, not conform to this world. And lastly, third one, verse 2, by renewing of your mind. Yeah? You have to renew your mind on a daily basis. Yes. You have to get rid of your old nature ways of thinking. Yes. You know, after salvation, there are certain parts of you that need to be changed. Yes. It can't be the same. I mean, if you, if you love watching wicked stuff on TV and internet, you got to stop watching it. Amen. After you got saved. If you love gambling, you got to stop gambling. Yes. If you love drinking and smoking and all those things that harms temple of God, you got to stop. Amen. If you love gossiping, you know, if you talk all this dirty stuff, you got to stop. Yes. I mean, you have to have some change after you've gotten saved. Yes, sir. That's why we pray, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. And if you don't renew your mind, what's going to happen? You're going to let the old mind just continuously rule every day, every part of your life. Then how can you really have that happen? 
It's not about what would Jesus do. No, that's not the answer. A much better question to ask would be, what would Paul do? Right? Because he's the greatest Christian ever lived. And Paul says, be ye followers of me, even as I, am, I also am of Christ. Then how do you think like Jesus Christ? How do you think like God? Right? It's not about speaking in tongues. It's not about praise and worship all the time. It's not about seeing him in your vision, right? No. The best way to think like Lord Jesus Christ, think like God, is to go to the scriptures. That's it. Amen. You have to go to the scriptures. Yes. This book, you know, good old King James Bible, this book, the Word of God, is the only place where you will find what the Lord thinks on any given subject situation. And you know for sure that he's 100% right. Yes. Renewing of your mind, go to this book. Yes. You have to go to the scriptures on a daily basis. You have to live a balanced life, of course. You, know, you still need to pray. But many times, you and I get to a habit. We love to pray because life is a mess. So you just pray and pray and pray, pray. But you never go to the book, right? You want to think like Lord Jesus Christ? Don't go out there, read all this, you know, literatures out there, like what would Jesus do or in his steps? No, you go straight to the word of God. Yes. And because why? God's opinion is 100% correct. Amen. What I write, what other people write, it could be wrong. Yes. It could be 99% right, but that 1% could pollute the whole mind. True. But the word of God is always 100%. Correct. That's why if you want to be opposite of this world, because you have to, it's Lord's command. You don't want to conform to this world. You have to renew your mind. And how do you do that? Through the scriptures. And once you start thinking like Lord Jesus Christ, you know, thinking like Apostle Paul, thinking like what God wants you to think like, then things of this world, it's not that hard to go opposite against because you have 100% proof. And the word of God is alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. I mean, it's giving you the strength, right? Amen. That's where I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You don't just hear it as words, but it's alive words that really lives within you. Then when you read Romans 12, 1 and 2, you can't really get to that perfect will of God. Don't ever think that you could get to the perfect will of God. And a lot of times Christians just are happy with, you know, good will of God, but you don't get the acceptable or perfect. Because many times you just love to be conformed to this world. But whenever you are conformed to this world, you are against Lord Jesus Christ. Remember yes. that. Whenever I enjoy amusements this world, I am against Lord Jesus Christ. Right. But when I stand against it, I'm with Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, somewhere, I know, Lord lives within you. He's in third heaven. He's like, wow, well done, thou faithful and good servant. Man, wouldn't you want to hear that from the Lord? Yes. I would love to hear that from the Lord. You know, not after I constantly repent of my sins, you know. Right. Man, don't get me wrong. We have to confess our sins at every moment, yes. but that shouldn't be majority of our life. No, sir. Our majority should be praising God, yes, sir. You know, preaching the gospel, standing up for what's right, Amen. because we are not being conformed to this world. It is a time and a moment, and it, it is for you to check. Man, have I dedicated my body as a living, holy sacrifice unto the Lord? Have I backslid him? It's time for me to repent and get right with the Lord and make sure that my body, not your life, because God's in everyone's life, including the devil's life. Your life is not the thing. Your body has to be that living sacrifice unto the Lord. Let's pray.